Hello everyone, welcome back to the Rational Investors ongoing tutorial series on how to use the Coinigy platform and technical analysis tools. Uh, this is part two of our uh, FIB uh, tool series all about extensions. Uh, and as you can see, I have on a Litecoin chart here, a weekly chart from Bitfinex. Um, and here is the current price action. Remember in the last tutorial, we talked about how we can draw retracement tools to identify levels off of higher time frame models. And as I said just a moment ago, this tutorial is going to be all about how we can draw extension tools. So uh, let's say that we're in a bull market, uh, which we appear to be in right now. And we'd like to try and figure out ways, uh, well, levels maybe that we might see some resistance come in. And we might see maybe the asset consolidate a little bit. And maybe we should look for a pause and maybe hunt for new setups. Maybe look to take profits on old setups and wait for new setups to develop to take trades. Uh, extension tools work really well for that. In essence, all they do is they measure a trading range and a breakout of the range. How far should we expect the market to move um, further from the range? Uh, and it turns out that as you can sort of see, you can kind of eyeball this, that the market actually likes to move in very measured steps. Uh, and it almost looks like if we change this to like a line chart, you can almost see it almost looks like it's actually walking up a staircase. And to a certain degree, that's what extensions are all about, is they are just sort of measuring the actual steps uh, on the staircase. And if we get too far, then it's a sort of a, a, a warning to traders that, hey, maybe your expectations are getting a little bit ahead of themselves and we probably ought to look for a pause. So how are we gonna draw our extension tools? You remember in the last tutorial, we told you you're gonna come over to this uh, left-hand pane and you're gonna select the third button down and it's gonna say uh, FIB retracements. And uh, I think this is set to uh, the levels that I like to use. I think what we probably ought to do for this tutorial is let's go back and let's just set it to the default settings. And remember in that last video, we told you that by default, what ends up happening with these tools is they draw both extension and retracement uh, levels off the same study. I actually don't think that that's productive. And for my students that I teach, I actually recommend that you build two separate studies that are completely unrelated because if you actually try and use these tools together, they actually don't give you uh, um, a, a correct perception of, of what's happening here. So what we're gonna do to start off with is we're gonna go into the settings and we're going to change things a little bit. First off, uh, I'm not um, big on the colors. I like to remove the background colors. So if I click off the background, now you can see we just have the levels. Since we're going to be doing extensions, I'm going to remove all of the retracement boxes. And you'll notice that I have basically zero and one. So that's measuring the range. And then all of the numbers above one represent the extension levels. Me personally, I'm a big fan of, uh, if you can think of things like head and shoulders patterns, I uh, remember that stair stepping uh, methodology. I'm actually a big fan to limit my extension studies to 200% of the anticipated move. And I'll, you'll, you'll see in a moment why I like to do that. Uh, but in essence, this creates sort of an upper bound, 1.618 to 200%. So anything beyond 200%, I'm gonna take off the screen for the time being. Having said that, if we start getting into really fast markets, I will sometimes apply 300% and 400% levels. Uh, and all those people that followed uh, Coinigy and us uh, through the last crypto bull market uh, probably remember Dash and Amanda's penthouse and how we had a lot of fun talking about the various different levels of the department store. Uh, we won't get into that today per se. We're just going to talk strictly about normal extension levels. Uh, but as you can see, we're actually missing a few levels that I think are actually really important. 
Um, those being uh, on an initial breakout of a range, we really like to keep a close eye on 113%, uh, which is a really interesting, uh, maybe we'll put it up here under this 400. Uh, really interesting extension level, which we often see a lot of harmonic uh, trade setups develop off of. So we'll add 113%. 127.2 is a very important um, extension level. So we're going to throw him on there. We already have 1.618. The only other level that I actually like to put on here just for reference is a midpoint between the 1.618 and the 1.272. And as you can see, if we just simply take 1.272 plus 1.618 and then divide that number by two, we'll get a midpoint of 144.5. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on here. Uh, I like to have it on my charts as a nice reference. So as you can see, my extensions uh, look a little bit different than what you normally expect. Uh, and what the defaults load, but um, uh, you know, in my education program, I teach traders. We often see a lot of harmonic patterns develop off of these levels, and so they're fairly self-explanatory when you really dig into detail uh, on extensions. But for the purposes of our conversation here today, there's only other one other thing that we want to really do here, and that is, uh, you remember in the uh, retracements tutorial. It's not a bad idea just to write right on your chart. Um, what question is this study attempting to answer? And when you do that, then when you look at your actual study and you try and figure out what question it is that you're trying to answer with the study, you'll see whether uh, your uh, extensions are actually drawn correctly. It becomes fairly self-explanatory. So. With that said, I've uh, drawn the market has come down, then it rallied back up, and you can see how I've drawn the extension study. And then we went and we actually W'd here. And anybody who's followed my videos in the past, you know how much I love W's. Down, up, down, breakout. That's a nice buy signal. So the question here now becomes, what am I going to use this extension study for? And the answer is, well, I want to see if we do break out of this trading range to the upside, where are some likely stopping points higher? So I basically the question is, what are my stopping points higher breaking out of a bullish W pattern? Clearly, this study is not drawn correctly. In fact, it's backwards. So we'll double click on it. We'll click the reverse button. I don't like to have the trend line on there because uh, it's just more information that I don't use. So I've clicked reverse. And now when I go back to my study, you can see I have nice pretty extension levels. Now, the way that I would suggest that you start out using this tool is what I like to call the parking garage. Um, specifically, uh, when we use these uh, extensions, remember we're in the retracement we said that 1.61, uh, excuse me, uh, 0.618 or our mountain man level is really important. Why don't we move this to the center so we can see these numbers too. All right, so now we can see them in glorious technicolor. So conversely, um, 0.618 is an incredibly important retracement level. 1.618 or what's known as the golden ratio in mathematics is really important uh, as an extension level. And gee whiz, hopefully everybody can see here, uh, 1.618 was $54.39.68. And you can see this one candle went zipping up and hit a high of 54.80, basically hitting that 1.618 and backing off. Now, what I usually suggest to students um, is Draw the 200% because remember that's really handy for things like head and shoulders and uh, what they call measured moves in the marketplace. And we draw a box right between the 1.618 and that 200%. And this is what we affectionately call our parking garage. Now you can use parking garages just simply as a, um, has the market moved a substantial distance? And in this particular case, you can clearly see, yes, it has. 
And is it warranted to think that maybe the market needs to take a bit of a pause? So in essence, you know, uh, 1.618 was rejected very hard. The market pushed back higher and you can see how it pushed right into this 200% and then had to take another pause. Now, in this particular case, you can see that the market did break out through there. So what I might suggest people do is at this point, if you're trying to figure out, okay, what's the next logical stopping point is we're gonna take our extension tool, draw it off of this range now, and then notice the same thing happens up above. Now we have our parking garage come in, 1.618 to 200%, and sure enough, there is another stall. And you can actually do this through the whole bull run. Maybe you wait for another consolidation and you're like, okay, if this thing's gonna break out through the top, where is the next logical stopping point? And if we draw that from the lows back up top, 1.618 up to 200%, and gee whiz, look where the price stopped, right at 1.618. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of how I uh, suggest to students uh, to actually draw these extension tools. The levels that I think are very important for us to keep an eye on, and this idea of the parking garage and how we can help us, uh, how we can use this tool to help us see where logical sort of pausing points in the market ought to be. All right, I think we'll leave it at that.